Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to King Arena on the campus of Wheaton College to tonight's CIW contest between the Vikings of Augustana College and your Wheaton College Thunder. At this time, we'd ask everyone to please rise for the playing of our national anthem. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the visiting Vikings of Augustana College. Number 10, a 6'4 sophomore from Malaga, Spain, Danny Romero. A 6'1 junior from Glenwood, Illinois, number 12, Matt Hawkins. Number 24, a 6'5 junior from Arlington Heights, Illinois, Chase Larson. A 6'6 junior from Elmwood Park, Illinois, number 30, Mike Hamilton. And number 32, a 6'4 senior from Rockford, Illinois, Tyler Knuth. The Vikings are coached by Jordan Delp. Here are the starters for your Wheaton College Thunder. A 6'5 senior from Littleton, Colorado, number 10, Nate Sock. Number 12, a 6'2 sophomore from Fort Mill, South Carolina, Kyle Nebs. A 6'3 freshman from Northfield, Minnesota, number 20, Soren Richardson. Number 24, a 6'4 senior from Columbus, Indiana, Nick Chavallo. Number 35, 6'9, Grant from Tempe, Arizona, Connor Braun. The Thunder's coached by Mike Schauer, assisted by John Panner and Timothy Watt. Our officials tonight, day, Dave Cronin, Kyle Long, and Rob Kruger. Good evening and welcome to this presentation of Wheaton College Thunder Basketball here at King Arena. Tonight we got a good one for you here, folks. It's the Wheaton College Thunder taking on the Augustana Vikings in this CCIW matchup. Recently, we've seen the Thunder take on Elmhurst and Illinois Wesleyan at home, and both we've seen some competitive games from the Thunder. Yeah, we've seen two very competitive games for the Thunder. Obviously, the Thunder coming off a tough loss against Illinois Wesleyan at Illinois Wesleyan. Little nine-point loss there, 73-64. to We saw the freshman Soren Richardson lead all Thunder scores in points with 18. And here's something to note. He made five three-pointers that game. Look for him to get heated up from beyond the arc here tonight. Sorensen, definitely a player we're going to watch as this season goes on. This will be one of the returning players for next year. Braun squares off in the center, and Augustana wins the tip, and we are underway here at King Arena. Romero for Augustana, controls the ball. 6'4 guard out of Spain. He's going to put up a shot, no good. And Wheaton makes a defensive stand in its first possession. Something rare you don't really see there. A player from another country, all the way from Spain. You can see one of the starters and better players here for this Augustana team. Chevello controls at the top of the key. He's going to send it to Sorensen. Chevello looking to drive. Sorensen 
3-2 zone here deployed by Augustana. Wheaton trying to penetrate, sends it out. Shafello's gonna put up the three and connects. Shafello right on the, the first money. Points. First points of the game here. It's a three nothing Thunder lead. Romero is gonna send it over to number th 32, Knuth. Back to Mike Hamilton into the starting lineup here for Augustana tonight. Back to Romero. Romero has an open lane. He's going to drive behind the shoulder pass. Kicks out for three. And it's going to be way off the mark as a dive ball. And Chavello is able to come up with a rebound. Looks like they might have been looking for a jump ball there, but. As Sorensen connects from three. Check, that was Kyle Nebs, the sophomore. Two back-to-back -back threes there for the Thunder. You see Kyle Nets making the shot. 6-0, Wheaton opens with an early lead. Romero over to Hamilton. Hamilton trying to drive inside. Sets up number 12, Hawkins, to line up. Hawkins working there on Nets, puts up the shot, and it's going to go. Good little bout there from the Titans. But great start here early for the Thunder. Most of their points coming from the mid-range and beyond the arc. Definitely off to a hot, hot start now. Far the first points of the game for Augustana. Wheaton still with a controlling 6-2 lead. Fell is going to send it over to Braun. Braun driving inside and try to go up strong, and the shot is no good. Rebound there by number 24, Cart Chase Larson on the Augustana side. Sort of a bit of the offensive struggle we've seen for the Thunder this year is getting points in the paint. Absolutely, as we see a foul there on Larson. Looks like they got Braun for that one. Just a little bit of a reach in there. Larson for the first shot, and it goes. Augustana and Wheaton both with similar records on the year. Augustana coming in a little ahead of Wheaton on the standings, but two generally even matched teams. No good. Rebound, though, goes to Augustana as it's Tyler Knuth who rallies it in. Hawkins trying to drive inside. He's going to put up the shot from mid-range. No good. Rebound to, goes to Sock. Chabello going to slow down the tempo a little bit as Augustana once again deploying a 3-2 zone here. Trying to trap Cervello at the top of the key. Cervello sends it to Sorensen. Sorensen kicks it inside to Braun. Braun, nothing doing, sends it back out. Cervello trying to drive inside, double team. Ball gets stripped away and recovered. Good defense by Augustana. An unfortunate turnover there for the Thunder. And there's going to be the lay-in by number 32, Tyler Knuth. Knuth there with the fast points. Obviously going to be big time for the Vikings here today. Tyler Knuth leading Augustana in points per game at 14.7. The leading scorers and better players for this Augustana Vikings team. Swanson driving inside, kicks out to Chevello. Chevello drives it to Sock. Sock puts up the three, no good. Rebounds corralled in there by Augustana, and Wheaton's offense has grinded to a bit of a halt. You know, that'll happen. We're seeing a matchup between the two best three-point shooting teams in the CCIW. Augustana leads with three-point three percentage shooting better than any other team. As we see a missed three-pointer there. Three point there is no good, but it's rebounded by Augustana. As Knuth rallies it in. 30 Hamilton driving in on Braun, no good. Rebound put back up. Nice bid there by number 24, Lee, but unable to go. Now on the other end of the court with the Thunder, Wheaton has more three-pointers made in the CCIW than any other team. You know, Mike Shower is a big three-point three philosophy. It's one of the best ways to score. We'll see if his team can convert from beyond the stripe tonight. Lay in there by Romero, no good. We are deadlocked here at six to five in the early goings. Yeah, been a little bit of a lull here in the opening minutes. Looking for somebody to get an offensive spark going. Sorensen sends into Sock. Chavello is going to take a three from the top of the arc. That one goes in and out. Rebound is corralled by Larson. Chavello was on the money there, just couldn't get it to go. Three ball there put up. I believe that was Knuth, no good. And the rebound is right to Sock. 
Both teams taking a lot of three-point shots, but unable to convert so far. Early on, we've already seen seven three-point attempts, four by the Thunder with two made, and three by the Titans, Shabella. or the Vikings. Braun, working inside, is gonna put it up and off the rim. Fortunately, still deadlocked here. Romero sends it over to Larson. Larson kicks it back. Romero at the top of the key. Over to Thermy Hamilton. Hawkins trying to drive inside, get something going. Nets on him. So far, good defense by Nets. Hawkins trying to get anything. Has to kick it back out, and it's stolen by Sorensen. Going to run the tempo. Chevello driving, and is going to corral it in there as they set up the offense. Sock, wide open, goes up for the dunk. No good, but a foul. Wonder if they'll call there. But after a little bit, bit of offensive rigmarole on both sides, finally going to be able to get some points here. The SAT where it's going as Nate Sock goes up. He's going to have an opportunity from the stripe. Sock makes the first one. Could have been an out, and it ends up going down. Sock shooting 61% from the charity stripe this year. For Wheaton, Ty Ferguson checks into the game for Connor Braun. As Wheaton goes with a bit of a smaller lineup here. Sock puts up the second one, and it goes in and out. Rolls over the rim. Agostana, number five. Evan Ambrose checks into the game. A bunch of substitutions are made. About six minutes in, we're already seeing some substitutions. This is going to be a pivotal point of the game. Augustana had 28 points off the bench in their loss against Illinois Wesleyan. Gilberto, one of those new additions into the game, puts up the shot. Good defense by Sock, no good. Rebound, and it's going to go to Augustana. I believe it was off of Ty Ferguson. Yeah, good effort there by Ferguson going up for it. Contested with Nebs. Just couldn't corral it in time. Trying to see Augustana get a second chance opportunity. Wheaton setting up the underneath basket defense. Gets sent in, shot attempt no good, but I believe there was a foul underneath the basket. Take a look at the replay here. Looks like they called it on Augustana, a little push off on Nate Sock, it looked like. You see Wheaton's able to recover Daniel Garza into the game for the first time here for the Thunder. Ferguson trying to crack the 3-2 zone, sends in to Sock, Sock pivots. Trying to work there on number 25, Gilberto. Ferguson had the shot no good. Sock driving, loses the ball, and it's going to be out. I believe they're going to give that to Augustana. Possession arrow does point towards Augustana. Sock just lost control there. Looks like he may have bounced it off of his own foot. Ambrose into the game here. He's going to try to drive. On Chavello with the mismatch, no good. So they'll kick it back out, drive inside for Anthony Cooper into the game for Augustana, but a foul was called. Another foul on Ferguson. Take a look at it here. Yeah, Ferguson just got his arm hooked in there and then a little push off. Ambrose looking for someone's gonna send it all the way out. Number 23, Zach Anderson, his first time into the game. Gilberto trying to drive in, sends it inside. Much contact under the basket. I believe they're going to get nets for that one. Yeah, Zach Anderson checks into the game for the Vikings. He led Viking scores with 11 points last game against Illinois Wesley and with Chase Larson coming in close behind with 10 points. Look for a little bit of a spark off the bench here. As we see Augustana utilizing its bench players early on in this one, rotating a lot of players in. Anderson trying to work on Garza. Anderson gets the open opportunity from the pick and is going to flush that one down. It was a little bit of a scoreless drought there. Augustana hadn't scored in the last four minutes. So far we see a 7-7 game here. It's Ferguson has it underneath, but kicks it out to Garza. Garza to Chevello. Chevello driving on the inside, sends it back out to Ferguson, looking for the shot opportunity, no good, as Augustana's offense continues to play well. It's going up by Chevello. It's gonna be a blocking foul on Augustana. Good effort there by Nick Chevello. Check the replay here. Ferguson passes him the ball. Chevello takes the opportunity to take it to the cup. The shot's no good, but he draws the foul, and he'll go to the charity stripe. 
Shabello looking to take the lead on scoring. He had the three-point shot earlier, looking to get some sh shots from the stripe this time as the first one goes down. Steve Schultz and Richard Sorensen check into the game for Garza and Nets. Shabello. Good on the second one as well. 9-7 lead here. It's both teams finding offense at a premium right now. Take any points they can get. Ambrose tried to drive inside, but nothing was there. He's going to send it in and around the corner to number 23, Cooper, who's off the mark. And Ferguson collects the rebound. Now we're just going to see a little bit of back and forth here on the three-point attempts. Sock gonna sing, swing it around to Sorensen. Sorensen for three, he's good! Right on the money. Back-to-back -back attempts. Soren Richardson connects there from deep. Richardson, getting a few of the shots here in the early goings for Wheaton. See Ambrose trying to get inside on Wheaton's defense. But Wheaton holding up so far. Amber's going to put it up from three, and he's going to connect. Augustana with the response. What a response there by Ambrose. Five foot nine, not able to drive inside, but he makes up for it from beyond the arc, swishing that one. Ferguson sends around to Chevello. Sock is going to put up the shot, no good. Rebound under the basket there by Schultz. Schultz fighting for it. Everyone in Augustana swarming. They're able to get the ball from him. Number 20, Gillingham's going to try to run the tempo. Nothing underneath the basket, kicks it out for three, and there's going to be a connection there. It's Anthony Cooper gets the three. Back-to-back -back threes for the Vikings. Gives them the 13-12 lead. Wheaton looking for a little bit of an offensive spark now. Ferguson has it on top as the zone is again deployed by Augustana. Schultz fighting for him, there's going to be a foul. They got number 25, Nicholas Gilberto. Underneath. Yeah, Gilberto just got his arm around in there. Got a little bit of contact on Schultz. Schultz will come out of the game along with Ferguson. Nebs back in the game. As well as Connor Braun checks back in. Going with a little bit of a bigger lineup now as Chavello goes to the basket, no good. Rebounds collected there by number 20, Gillingham. Anderson trying to drive here on Nets. Anderson's gonna pivot. Gonna go with the fadeaway shot, no good. Rebound there for Soren Richardson. Chavello sends in to Nets. Nets thought about the three, decides not to. Kicks it back out to Chavello. Go to Richardson. It's Braun here on the outside of the key looking for something to go going offensively, but so far Augustan's playing really stout defense. Sock. Driving inside, kicks it back out. Braun decides to kick out for the three, goes to the basket and gets, does not get the foul as it's gonna be a charge. Look at this here, Connor Braun. Thought he could have got it in there. Just a little too strong. And the offensive struggles continue to permeate for the Thunder. So we've seen a lot with this Thunder team trying to find one consistent sort of source of offense as we've seen much more of a team effort this year. Still trying to find their rhythm as a unit. Karsten Shum, the junior from New Jersey, checks into the game for the Thunder, looking to get some more big man presence in the game. So Augustana driving from underneath. That's number 20, Colton Gillingham. Sends it out to Ambrose. Ambrose is gonna kick it all the way over for Knuth. He's gonna go up, no good. I said that was Mike Hamilton trying to go up, but the foul is going to be called. Yeah, we got big on big action here. Shum just trying to go for the rebound. Tries a little too hard. Gets the over the back call. Possession arrow remains with the Vikings. Ambrose underneath the basket. It's going to be a put up shot there, and it's going to be good for Tyler Knuth. Great shot sele selection there from Knuth. Just seizing the opportunity to take the open shot, and he drains it. Chavello has they on the outside, trying to drive in, suffocating defense there for Augustana as they're swarming, but a foul is called. Here's the replay. Chavello gets trapped, dishes it to Ferguson, and Ferguson was looking to pass to Nebs and got called on the foul there. Nebs underneath the basket, feeds it to Richardson. Richardson, no good. 
as that one rolls in and out, in and out, rebound collected by Larson. Gastana trying to run the floor. He's gonna go up and gets the foul. More point opportunities for Tyler Knuth. Right there, Richardson just premature jump. Draws the foul. That'll send Knuth to the line for two. Knuth currently with four points on the night, make that five. You see Nate Sock check back into the game for Chavello. A little bit of an offensive struggle here for the Thunder. Something that Coach Shower has been a little bit critical on is their physicality underneath the basket. I know he's been trying to rectify that, trying to take a few more shots underneath the basket. And after the second shot is made, we see an immediate foul there. Number 24, Chase Larson. As Ferguson draws the foul. I believe that was Ambrose, actually. Yeah, Ambrose just gets too attached to Ferguson's hip there. Draws the foul. Sock. Gonna send it into Ferguson. Currently Wheaton faced with a 17 to 12 deficit. Richardson. Gonna send it out to Sock. Sock trying to drive this one inside. Nets is gonna pull up jumper for three. It's gonna be off the mark, no good. Rebound collected by Augustana. Augustana trying to run the floor, drive inside, goes up and gets the foul, but not the basket as bodies go flying underneath. See what the refs call here. Good hustle by the Vikings. Looks like that was number 24. Chase Larson going in on the shot. They'll call Nebs on the foul there. First shot taken by Larson goes. Chavello goes back into the game for Shum. You see Wheaton trying to rotate Biggs in and out. We've seen Braun, Shum, and Chavello into the game, but so far not a clean rhythm. No, not, not much of a rhythm, not really able to get anything underneath the basket. That's not where they're strong from. Wheaton's not really playing into their strings here. They need to continue to play from beyond the arc. That's where they found the most success this season. Chavello's gonna send it into Ferguson. Ferguson, trapped underneath, gonna kick it out to Nebs for the three-pointer, and it goes! Kyle Nebs finally gets Wheaton back on the board. Ends a little bit of a drought there. Wheaton still trails by four, but a good offensive spark by Nebs there. Picks up by Hamilton as Romero, who's back into the game, drives and gets the easy points. Danny Romero stretching the Augustana lead to 21-15. Ferguson looking to answer, gonna send it to Richardson. Richardson pulls up from three, no good. Rebound is taken down by Mike Hamilton. That was a deep shot from Soren Richardson there. Just hits it off the rim. Romero finds Hamilton. Hamilton rolls it out, shot put up there by number 24, Larson, no good. The rebound goes to Chevello. Chevello's trying to run the floor. Chevello's gonna send it over to Sock. Sock pulls up from three, no good. Rebound there by Augustana. Part of the reason Wheaton leads the CCIW and three-pointers made is because they take so many three-point shots every single game. Whether or not they fall or not. As you see in the past, that was a big part of Mike Shower's teams and key three-point shooters like Eli Considine in the past were able to make some of those threes. So far, yet to see a lot of those guys for Wheaton emerge. Chavello gets the rebound and draws the foul. He talked about guys like Considine. He talks about guys like Crookshank. Really hard to come back from after graduating so many seniors last year on that Elite Eight run. Wheaton trying their best to keep up this game. Down by six. Look for Coach Shower to try to dial something up here. Get something going from beyond the arc. Some more substitutions for the game as number 32, Tyler Knuth goes out. He's currently the leading scorer as we see Anthony Cooper check back in for him. Yeah, Knuth leads the Vikings with six points. Kyle Nebs leads the Thunder in scoring with six points. Going to be looking for more of Wheaton's playmakers to step up and start making baskets here. They take one of them out, Nebs, 
Subs for Daniel Garza. See Garza back into the game. Senior on this team is big in the locker room. A key role player off the bench. Chevello gonna try to cut into this deficit here. As the first shot is good. It's still sitting at a 21 to 16 game. And so far we've seen Wheaton trying to go up tempo, trying to take threes, haven't found as much success from beyond the arc. Well, Augustana is really running an off -temp up tempo offense, but they're getting to the basket inside. Yeah, Augustana's done a great job of slicing through Wheaton's defense and finding the shots on the inside, forcing the layups, finding mid range, and obviously they've had a little bit of success from the arc, shooting two for seven. Another shot from beyond the arc there by Cooper, no good. Rebound goes to Chevello. We've seen Wheaton succeed when they slow their offense down and they find the open shot. Look for the open, the open ball shooter. Chevello trying to drive inside, goes to Ferguson on the outside. Ferguson, nothing in that 3-2 zone there for Augustana. As Richardson kicks it back out to Chevello. Chevello trying to drive inside. He's going to, puts it up and no good. Looked like he had a good shot there, but unable to convert. Romero is going to drive the other way, go through the defenders and connects. Nice move by Romero there. Gets a little bit of sleight of hand as he goes to the basket and rolls that one in. He was able to make that layup on nets. Richardson in the corner, but defended well. Kicks it Garza inside. Augustana swarms. Ferguson kicks it over. Sock has a little bit of room. Tries to drive inside. Puts it up and no good as the rebound is collected by Augustana. Romero is going to try to run the floor again as it's poked out. And they're going to say it's out on Wheaton. Check the replay on that one. Ferguson and Chevello were on Romero, but it looked to me as if the ball may have come off Romero's knee, but officials must have a view that we didn't. Good call by the officials. As Ambrose checks back into the game, Anderson trying to drive inside, nothing there. Larson working on Sock. Nice pass inside, but unable to be handled by Cooper as it's going to go back towards Wheaton. That one definitely going off the Vikings there. Wheaton will get the ball back. We're looking for any sign of offense from the Thunder at this point. They haven't been successful under the rim. If they're going to continue to try to go underneath the rim, they need to make the shots that they're putting up. None of their shots have fallen recently. Still see the Thunder hanging around in this game, only down currently by seven. We see Chevello trying to work there on Ambrose. Chevello's going to kick it out to Ferguson. Ferguson trying to drive inside, deflected there by Cooper. Richardson's going to try to put it up and gets the basket to go. Nice little left-handed hook shot there from Soren Richardson. Ends a little bit of this offensive drought for the Thunder. See Gillingham, who's back in the game, sent to Ambrose. Ambrose going to swing it around to the outside of the key with Cooper. The shot's going to get put up there by Larson. No good. As Chevello collects the rebound, trying to run the floor. Lose the ball for a little bit, but is able to collect. Kick it out. Richardson from outside. No good. The offensive drought continues here for the Thunder. Ambrose trying to drive inside on Chevello is able to collect the rebound. Wheaton's defense collapsed a little bit. Three-point shot put up. No good, but they're going to wave it off. Yeah, look at the replay here. Anthony Cooper went up for it. And Colton Gillingham hit the rim, trying to grab the rebound. Possession error will go to the Thunder. A little bit of an error there by Gillingham. As we see Ferguson trying to drive up the tempo, currently a five-point game here. Ferguson going to send it inside to Richardson. Richardson trying to work inside. He's going to go up and get the easy basket. Richardson providing a little bit of offense here as it's a three-point game. Richardson now with seven points on the night. He leads the Thunder in scoring after those two back-to-back put-ups. Something to note, we need to see a little bit more offensive rebounds from the Thunder. Get those second chance points. Second chance opportunity here for Augustana. No, but good. Kicked it back out to Anderson who controls it. Nice job on the board there for Augustana. 
Larson's gonna send it over, and a timeout's gonna be called by Augustana coach Jordan Delp. First timeout here of the game, and we have three minutes left here in the first half. So far we've seen a bit of a back and forth game. Wheaton trying to establish the offense, starting to get some of those shots underneath the basket. What else does Wheaton need to do to get back into this game? I think what Wheaton really needs to do is slow down their game. That's where they've been the most successful. If you've watched some of the games in the past, they're hitting their shots when they slow down the game, they're controlling the ball, and they're having good movement. Their ball movement tonight is a little bit sloppy. They've let the ball get tipped, they're turning the ball over, they aren't finding open shots like they have been in the past. Look for them to try and find those open shots beyond the arc. That's where they've been the most successful. Now, Augustana, on the other hand, they've had a lot of success cutting into the Wheaton defense, going up to the basket. They've hit two out of their nine three-pointers. Not great, but they're still causing just a little bit of, of havoc from beyond the arc. They're putting, they're putting their shots up, making most of them, and they're drawing fouls. One of the things we also see here is this Augustana defense deploying a 3-2 zone at times, which Wheaton has been unable to penetrate so far, and they've done a good job at moving to protect the three-point shot. A little bit of the penetration struggle has to do with the struggle with the physicality. Three-point ball is going to be made there by Chase Larson as it's a six-point game. Larson making the three as the buzzer goes off. See, just a good selection there by Larson to put it up. Gives the little bit of cushion for the Vikings here. It's gonna be sent inside to Ferguson. Ferguson on the much bigger Hamilton there as it's gonna be sent out to Chevello. Chevello sends it to Ferguson. Soren on the outside. Garza has the lane. Gonna try to put it up. No good, but the foul. Called it on the shot there for Garza. Garza gets the ball. Sees the open lane. And that's... Chase Larson going up for the block. Gets a little bit of skin-to-skin -skin contact on Garza, sending him to the stripe. Good job there by Evan Ombro, staying on his man and making sure Garza doesn't get the easy shot. First one goes. As Romero checks back into the game for Evan Ambrose on the Augustana side. Garza puts up the second shot and it's good. Wheaton trims it back to a four point game. Even though then some sloppy play, Wheaton's not going away. Yeah, Romero. a little bit of sloppy play here and there. Not the cleanest game from either side. And the three is gonna be made there by Zach Anderson. Augustana now four for 11 from beyond the arc with that Anderson three. Two recently made threes, putting some distance, 29-22. As we get into the final two minutes here of the first half, Ferguson kicks it out. Chavello takes the three and connects. A much needed response from the Thunder by Nick Chavello. Chavello finds Paydirt there, able to provide a little bit of a cut into that deficit for the Thunder. Romero on the outside, gets the pick from Hamilton, trying to drive in on Chavello. Sends it back out to Zach Anderson. Anderson's gonna put it up, no good. Rebound's gonna be collected by Chevello. Chevello finds Richardson in the corner, nothing there. Sock trying to drive inside. As he kicks it back out to Ferguson. Garza sends it over to Chevello. Looking to drive inside on this Augustana defense as they've transitioned to man to man. Foul off the ball here as Chevello. And I believe that is number 23, Zach Anderson, go flying. Yeah, Garza just trying to find an open lane underneath the basket. Gets the foul drawn on him as he goes sprawling over the floor. It'll send him back to the, to the free throw line. See if he can connect on these next two, just as he did on his last two attempts. Number Cut it to a two-point game. Number 33, Andrew Aine checks into the game for Augustana for the first time as Garza makes both of his shots. Actually, that was his first shot, I believe. There was a little bit of confusion there, I think, from both ends, getting everybody set back up. Garza will now make his second shot. And now it's a two-point ball game with a minute and a half left to go in this first half. Romero 
Gonna kick it over to number 24, Larson. As Gillingham's trying to drive inside. Garza picks him up defensively. Gillingham fighting, puts it up. No good, but they're gonna call the foul on Garza. Coach Shower does not like that one. Take a look at the replay here. Garza gets bumped by Gillingham. Just, just a hair of contact there from Garza. Tough call there as Wheaton's looking for any advantage as the shot's gonna be made there by Colton Gillingham. Minute 22 left, 30 to 27 deficit here. As the second shot's no good, rebound is gonna go to Sock. As he gets the rebound over Anai. Chabello looking to bring this one back within a one score game or tie it up. Nets finds Garza, Garza sends out to Sock. And this would be the good time for a Wheaton three here. Driving inside, Sorensen gets it and the foul! Soren Richardson with a three point opportunity. Not the three we were expecting, but the three that the Thunder need as Richardson will head to the line to attempt to make this a three point play and tie the game with 59 seconds left to go in the half. As Nets checks out, Steve Schultz back into the game. Richardson will get the second or the first shot to go. 30 to 30 game here, under a minute left to play. Richardson capitalizing on that three point play. Makes it a tie game. Gillingham sends it to Romero, gets the pick from Anai. Romero driving inside, they're gonna call it off. I believe they're gonna call the foul on Wheaton. Believe they'll call that on Garza. And Danny Romero heads to the line. See Romero trying to give the Vikings an advantage here and he makes the first shot. See so far, no one quite in foul trouble yet. We've seen Nets, Braun, and Garza all have two. So, so far not something to watch necessarily as Augustana takes a two point lead. Yeah, not something really to watch, but I, I believe we'll see a little bit more rotation early on in the, in the second half. Save their key playmakers, save the fouls for the late game if they need them. See, Sock has ball on the top of the key, sends it over to Nets. Nets to Richardson, puts up the three and connects! Soren Richardson giving Wheaton the lead. Heavily contested three there by Richardson in one of the hardest spots to shoot on the court from the corner. Absolutely nails that one. Anai with the shot clock turned off, gonna send it to Anderson. Anderson gonna fire it to the corner. Romero's gonna try to grow up in a crowd, gets it and one. Oh, what a shot by Danny Romero. Romero just spins that one in. My goodness. See the replay here, Romero from the corner. Takes the drive against Chavello. Gets it to fall. Wow, deflating for the Thunder as Romero makes the shot. 7.2 on the clock. Chavello gonna have to move. Currently down two. Chavello gonna try to drive inside. He's gonna put up the shot, no good. Time expires and that's the half. Augustana currently leading 35-33. Wheaton showing some good signs of life at the end. Definitely still a competitive game as Wheaton is currently down two at the half.
was definitely the best place, I mean, for me that I could have ever gone. I look back just making that decision to come to Wheaton and I'm so grateful, you know, for everyone in that process who helped lead me to Wheaton. I mean, I feel like I've, I've grown in just so many different ways looking back to my freshman year, even just thinking about it now to kind of where I am now and really couldn't have asked for any better place to be. And honestly, again, that's a testament to all the people that I got to surround myself with every day here. When I saw him play in high school, I came back and told Coach Banner, he clearly is talented enough, but he is so small. Growing up as very short, skinny, kind of out of place point guard, I think that's really where you have to have a chip on your shoulder to know and go in that, you know, I've put in the work and I, you know, I deserve to be on the court here. But to be honest, he wasn't the best player on his high school team, and then he wasn't the best player at Wheaton for four years. But honestly, very quickly into his first few practices, I could tell we had somebody pretty special but he is by all measure now one of the all-time great players to ever put on a Wheaton jersey. But he's also gonna be the type of young man that you can point back to and say, this is what a star player looks like, behaves like, and acts. I think like looking back early on in my career, I really was like afraid to fail. And that's something that we talked about a lot was throw all your dice out there, put all the chips out there. Um, and don't be afraid to fail. And that's something that we kind of worked on together. And that's really what helped us gain trust. And, and I mean, for me, my past, you know, two, three years, I was really able to play more free. When you get a young man like Tyson, you realize you got something pretty special as a coach because in a lot of ways, he became the leader of our team. And I just cheered a lot. I mean, he just became somebody who really embodies everything you want from a best player. It's honestly such a great honor and it's something that I mean I never really thought was was on the table. I do describe the Justice Trophy regularly uh, as the Division Three Heisman for men's basketball. It really is in many ways the most prestigious award that is given out in men's and women's basketball at the Division Three level. It not only measures the basketball ability of the men and women at Division Three basketball, but also the academic and service of those individuals. So it's a total award that really encompasses not only just the talent level, but really the most outstanding student athlete in our sport. The initial feelings were just like of gratitude and thankfulness um, to Wheaton, to Coach Shower, to Coach Panner, um, everybody who invested in me during this time. I, I thought he was better than people probably perceived. The fact that he wasn't on any All-America list, preseason list, surprised me, given the career he had had to that point. And I think he kind of carried a little bit of that chip on his shoulder into this season and used that as motivation. Uh, I'm not going to let anybody outwork me. I think that's really kind of where it comes from and, and stems from is just wanting to win badly enough to where you know you're, you're willing to sacrifice. One of the things I love about Tyson is he averaged over five rebounds a game and he's not much taller than me. Um, so he just simply was relentless uh, to go rebound the basketball and knew that um, given our, our personnel, that was gonna be a potential area of weakness and that he needed to help us there. I honestly believe if I didn't show up for a week, Tyson would have made sure our team did exactly the same thing we did when I was there. And so his legacy will, uh, will be brought up over and over and over again, whether I'm here or not, because he's gonna be on the wall and that trophy's gonna be downstairs. The academic reputation of the institution is so high that the students we get here are really self-motivated to do well academically, that matters to them. So they're typically pretty good students on our roster. And then because of their relationship to Jesus, there's a sense that we should serve others and, and try to model that as Jesus did. Looking back on the Israel trip and Zimbabwe trip, those are two things, um, I mean, just looking back on my career that I will never forget. The relationships that we built out there were just so incredible. Go to the Holy Lands, we're gonna do all those biblical sites and, and really study the Bible uh, on that trip. And our trip to Zimbabwe, which Tyson also went on, we did, uh, we did clinics and did service projects. And we are gonna visit the historical sites and, and do some fun stuff uh, in addition to playing some games. But we're gonna do it in a different uh, context than most Division Three basketball programs. Um, there's just so many incredible things about those trips. It makes the whole time at Wheaton and specifically a Wheaton basketball player just so special. All he cared about was winning and that just makes life easy for a coach because if your best player cares about that and your best player has his work ethic, it's hard for other people to come up with too many excuses. They sort of follow because he's just such a great leader. They say the friends you make at college will be friends for life. 
We say the friends you make at Wheaton College will not only be lifelong, but life-changing. That's because Wheaton is a grace-filled, Christ-centered, fun community unlike any other. From talent shows to all-school communion, Christmas celebrations to hip-hop battles, you'll have opportunities every single day to express who you are and how you see the world, to lead, work, serve, and worship together, to define your convictions with peers and mentors who support and encourage you, and expect your friendships to last not only on campus, but throughout your life as part of a Wheaton family that spans the globe. This isn't just an educational experience. It's an unparalleled journey that you can only find at Wheaton. When I first came to Wheaton, the ISP was one of the first offices I found. They helped me get settled in from getting me a SIM card to taking me to the bank to open a bank account. They're very supportive of students whose families live overseas. From freshman year, I joined Mukapa, which is a club at Wheaton for third kosher kids. And we got together every Sunday to share a meal or have fun together. And it was a great place to find community. During my sophomore year, I started working with Mukapa as a publicity manager and it was amazing to just see freshmen coming in and get settled at Wheaton and find community at Macapa just as I did. From psychology to business, health to history, Wheaton College offers 150 plus majors, minors, and concentrations, and 20 plus grad programs, all taught by world-class scholars who will mentor you, motivate you, and prepare you for the career you want. But the top tier academic experience you'll find at Wheaton doesn't stop at career preparation. Here, we want you to think big picture. See the world through a Christ-centered point of view. Make connections between your faith and your interests and your studies. Pursue academic excellence, not at the risk of your faith, but for the sake of your faith. In the end, you'll have developed a vision for vocation and a passion for service while strengthening your wisdom and character. That's what makes the Wheaton experience so profound and so long lasting. It's a whole person preparation for your whole life's journey. Humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, faithful believers. For Christ and his kingdom, Wheaton stands at the forefront of Christian liberal arts education. Here, we facilitate an unparalleled journey for our students, bringing together deep faith and intelligence to pursue their most ambitious callings. At Wheaton, Reaching God-given potential is never accomplished alone. From coaches on the field to professors in the classroom, we come together to make space for students to wrestle with timeless questions and pursue biblically informed, thoughtful wisdom as they pursue academic, artistic, and athletic excellence. We are one of the nation's colleges that change lives because that is exactly what we do. We live, work, serve, and worship together as an educational community centered on Jesus and reflecting the beautiful diversity of his kingdom. It's collaborative, immersive, Christ-centered. Our enduring model with twin traditions of quality academics and deep faith 
along with a faculty of Christian thought leaders and a staff of dedicated believers, allows us to champion the true essence of the Christian liberal arts educational experience. Continuing the legacy lived out by iconic thinkers and evangelical luminaries around the globe, Wheaton integrates and connects disciplines through Christian thought, diverse peers, and contemporary global context. Here, adventurous thinkers and faithful believers come together to create a mosaic of diverse backgrounds, beliefs, and hopes. It's a place of curiosity and conviction, a place to live out your values and pursue your ambitions. Except here, it's not only about what you can achieve. It's about who you can become. Living out our calling with heart and skill through Christ-centered leadership. At Wheaton, you don't have to settle. We call ourselves Thunder because, like Thunder, the Wheaton Network is a force moving through him and for him to build the church and benefit society worldwide. Like rolling thunder, God's mighty voice calls us to be humble leaders, adventurous thinkers, and faithful believers for Christ and his kingdom. And we are back here at King Arena for the second half of this matchup between the Wheaton College Thunder and the Augustana Vikings. So far, we see a 35 to 33 game. Augustana currently leading by two. And we've seen Wheaton trying to establish an offensive rhythm as we see uh, Soren Richardson leading the way with 13 points. What are some of the other things that Wheaton has to do to get into this game? Yeah. Dominic, we need to see Wheaton get some of their playmakers more involved in the game. Nate Sock only has one point. He led the Thunder uh, second in scoring for the Thunder last game against Illinois Wesleyan with 13. Having one point in the first half of one of your top playmakers isn't something that's going to allow for success on the court. So we need to look for him to get a little bit more acclimated to the game here. Also, we need to see the Thunder slow down a little bit. They weren't able to hit much from in the paint in the first half. Look for them to continue to strike from beyond the arc, slow down the game, and get good ball movement. Well, we are back underway as Chevello inbounds, and Wheaton will have the first possession. Chevello for drive inside, sends it out to Braun. Braun fumbles the ball a little bit, able to collect, sends it back to Sock. Sock finds Richardson in the corner. Richardson gonna try to drive inside on Larson. Sock puts up the three off the mark, and Augustana gets the first rebound of the second half. Just a little bit to the right there for Sock. Not able to connect. You see Hamilton controlling it underneath. Drive inside there by Knutz. Knutz puts it up way off the mark as Richardson collects the rebound. Chabello 
Trying to drive, find Sock on the inside. Sock's gonna go up, he's not gonna get the basket, but he'll get the foul. Good drive there from Sock. Would like to see him finish, just maintain possession of the ball as he's getting contacted and follow through, through the foul. But good job by Sock drawing the foul. His only point's coming off of a free throw in the first half. See if he can connect here. And sometimes plays like these are the ones that gets player going. Unfortunately, unable to make the first shot. This will remain a two-point game. Sock will make the second as Wheaton draws within one. Romero is going to try to drive inside, has a lane, kicks it over. The three-point attempt is going to be put up by Knutz, and Knutz is going to connect. I'm sorry, yep, Knuth will connect. Great shot from Knuth. Romero just finding him open from beyond the arc, getting him the, the ball to, to make that shot. Braun trying to drive inside on Hamilton. Fortunately, there's going to be a Wheaton turnover as it's fired out of bounds. Early turnover as Braun tried to get it to Soren Richardson, and Richardson either wasn't ready or just couldn't corral it properly. Larson's going to send it to Hamilton. Hamilton pivots, gives it to Knuth. Knuth, one of the leading scorers here for Augustana so far in this one from a mostly balanced attack. So Romero kicks it over to Hamilton. Hamilton thought about the shot, decided not to. Driving inside by Larson, puts it up, no good. Rebound picked out, but they're going to call a foul on Garza. Ooh. I believe that foul's going to be on Sock. Yeah, Sock on Hamilton there. Hamilton took a hard fall, was down for a second. Good to see him back up. Possession arrow remains with the Vikings. It's Romero underneath the basket finds ha Hamilton, who's going to put up a three way off the mark. And Sock is able to collect the rebound. There goes Knuth on the shot. Sock thought about putting the tempo up, decides to drive it inside. Sock back out, trying to drive inside this time. He's going to put up the shot, and that'll roll in. Nate Sock with his first basket from outside of the line tonight. See, that's what we're talking about there. Bit of good ball movement by the Thunder. You saw Braun to Sock, Sock to Braun, back to Sock. Sock rolling in off the screen, getting the, the bucket in. It's just what they need to cook up to get the offense rolling here. Hamilton, facilitator, is going to send it inside to Knuth. Knuth being worked on by Chevello, sends it to Romero. Romero had a lane, makes the extra pass. Blocked there by Connor Braun. And that gets the crowd going. A little bit of a spark here for the Thunder. Connor Braun with that strong block underneath the basket. Let's see if they can take advantage. Sock on the inside. Braun is open. Uh, Sock's going to take it himself and do it himself. Tie game here, 38-38, as Sock provides the offensive spark for the Thunder. And what was it that we said? Sock needed to step up a little bit in the second half. And so far in the opening three minutes, he's done that. Romero driving on the inside, and he's going to make a tough basket. It's Danny Romero with the response. Garza is going to send it into Braun. Open Richardson from the corner. Connects! Soren Richardson gives Wheaton a one point lead as Augustana wants to talk this one over. Coach Shower obviously pleased, trying too hard not to crack a smile there as he goes to the huddle. But I know he's pleased with the performance so far coming out, re regaining this lead. Obviously it's a one point lead, so it's still very close. But good job by the Thunder there, finding a wide open Soren Richardson for the three. As we can see, Wheaton's creating some of those open shots. They excel when they're able to have good ball movement, find the open shot. And that's one of the most open shots we've seen so far tonight for the Thunder, as they're able to take a one-point lead here. Dominic, you're exactly right. In the first half, we saw just an abundance of problems in the paint for the Thunder. Going up, not being able to connect, drawing fouls, not being able to hit all the free throws that they wanted to. Just kind of speeding up their offense and forcing it just a little a little bit too much. Just enough to make them uncomfortable. Augustana was playing that 3-2 uh, zone defense that really gave them a lot of problems. They weren't 
physical enough to really penetrate through and drive to the basket. But now they're finding a little bit more success underneath the basket here in the second half. As we can see, we going out to a one-point lead here, starting to get an offensive rhythm. Zagasana will have the ball underneath on the other side. Knuth sends it into Ambrose. Tony Gillingham back into the game. Ambrose trying to drive inside, sends it to Knuth. Knuth waits, gets the shot, and the foul. Chance for a three-point play for Knuth. There's just a little bit of contact as he went up for the shot there. It's that second moment of hesitation that Knuth was able to capitalize on as Shabella went airborne. Knuth will make and convert on the three-point opportunity, 43-41 here in the early goings of the second half. Now, Dominic, here's something to note. At the end of the first half, Kyle Nebs drew his third foul, not making the start for the second half. Instead, it's Garza. Who, can, who gets underneath, unfortunately unable to convert, but gets the foul. Nice pass there from Connor Braun to find him underneath. Yeah, take a look at the replay here. Garza just comes completely free. Well, he had, a, he had Hamilton on him. Almost got the shot there, drew the foul. But Neb's sitting out on the bench right now, wanting to preserve him for late game. He's been deadly from beyond the arc. The first one is good for Garza. Ty Ferguson checks into the game for Connor Braun. Neb's had a bit of a quiet game against Illinois Wesleyan last Wednesday. Pinnitz also checks out for Anthony Cooper on the Augustana side. We see definitely, we talked earlier about if fouls were going to play into this game, so we see Nets on the bench to start. See at one point the shower decide to bring him back in. Ambrose driving on Sock. He's going to, doesn't have an opportunity there, but kicks it over to Hamilton. Facilitates Ambrose back over, driving again on Sock. He gets a nice pass over, wide open three in the corner, no good as Larson is unable to convert. Chavello gets the rebound, sending it over. Ferguson had an opportunity, decides not to take it. Chavello, nice pass, finds Ferguson on the corner. Oh, and he almost connects. And that's gonna be out, Augustana ball. Back-to-back -back open threes. These are the shots that you really need to make. I mean, you just had two men completely wide open, miss their shots, just a little bit off the mark, bouncing off the rim. Obviously, that could be huge momentum changers as we're tied at 43 here. You see Ambrose running the offense here for Augustana, trying to find something on the inside. Dangerous pass, but corralled in there by Cooper as Larson decides to set it back up on the other side. Larson, short, or excuse me, Cooper as the three pointer there by Larson is no good. Chavello on the rebound. He decides to run the floor. Holds up. Sock trying to drive inside, loses the ball a little bit. I believe they're going to have to call a jump ball on this one. Oh, and they're going to give they're Sock a technical. Teed him up. Sock looked like he was just trying to get up. He's trying to plead his case. Oof. Tough break there for Nate Sock. So fortunately, the technical is called on Wheaton. We've seen the past, these technicals can be huge momentum swings in the game. You're exactly right, Dominic. In a tie game like this, such a back and forth close game, this could be, this could be big. Anthony Cooper will be taking the shots and he misses the first one. Must have been a little bit distracted there. And he makes the second. Augustana takes the lead off of Cooper's free throw. They'll get the ball back. Sock is going to get him out of the game, and Kyle Nets is back in for Wheaton as Augustana trying to capitalize off of this opportunity. Ambrose has it. He's going to send it over to Cooper. Cooper loses the ball, collected there by Garza. Garza squeezes it out to Nets, and Wheaton is able to survive the technical. Ferguson swarmed there by Augustana as Richardson is going to send it over to Garza. Garza puts it up, no good. It's going to be rebounded by Augustana, and they're going to want to run the floor. It's going to be sent over there, and the shot is going to be no good from Gillingham. In and out there from Gillingham. 
The game has picked up pace now. It's going to be about who can slow it down. Look for Wheaton right here to slow their offense down. That's what Sox doing. Exactly. Look for the ball movement. Exactly. Chevello controlling the pace a little bit. That pass is tipped up, and a foul is going to be called on Augustana. That'll be on Colton Gillingham. Sweden will have this one under the basket. So Augustana is going to want to talk this one over. Well, so far we saw the technical on Sock, but Augustana unable to capitalize from the opportunity, only making one of the free throws, and then not getting any points on their possession. So great way for Wheaton to weather the storm. Yeah, it's really good for them to weather the storm. That was great effort on the defensive side of the ball by Garza corralling that ball, finding an open Thunder player, passing it to him, and then Wheaton coming down, trying to get the shot up. Obviously, they don't. They get fouled. So they'll come out of this timeout here. Look for them to control the game. Look for them to slow down. I, I, I personally would imagine Nebs to try and take a shot here, just heat him up a little bit. He's been so good from beyond the arc this year. He leads the Thunder. In three-point shots made, I believe. This is a guy that you want controlling your game. So far, we've seen the tempo of the game get really, really fast. And so definitely in Wheaton's interest to try to slow it down, set up their offense, and create good ball movements to try to get those open shots. See what uh, Coach Delp has in store for the Vikings as they come out of their huddle. Obviously, he was very successful when he ran that 3-2 zone in the first half. They're a little bit quicker and more successful in offense when they're able to control down the court very fast. I would imagine if you're Coach Delph, you're trying to speed the game up a little bit. So far in the second half, Wheaton's done really well offensively. Soren Richardson now with 16 points, only player, but one of the only Wheaton players in double figures. It's Ferguson. We'll have it after the pass from Chevello. He's going to call the play from the top of the key. Going to try to swing it inside. Chevello drives on the inside, gets the opportunity. Open look for Nebs. No good. Rebound there by Ambrose. Nebs called a shot, came up just a little short. Now we got Ambrose. Ambrose decides to pass in midair, sends it over to Larson. Larson kicks it back out to Ambrose, and Ambrose is going to have to reset. This is over. Shot put up there by Larson, no good. Rebound controlled by Nets. And Ferguson's trying to look to run the floor. Slows down, sometimes against Sorensen. Chavello underneath, swarmed and stripped. Absolutely good job by Augustana on the defensive side. As Gillingham decides to slow the roll. Augustana just out physical and Nate. I mean, uh, Nick Chavello there. See Nicholas Gilberto in the game. Shot put up, and that's going to be good for Colton Gillingham as August Augustana extends their lead, 46-43. And I think that's something that Coach Showers been trying to rectify is this physicality of the Wheaton team, not, not being overly physical in the paint, not being able to finish their drives, as you saw there on that possession by Chavello. Braun puts it up and is good. Connor Braun with the difficult shot. Great look from Braun there, finishing in the paint. Wheaton only had six points in the paint wow. in the first half. In an area we could hopefully see some improvement as this game goes on. Chevello covering Ambrose, and Ambrose is going to have to dish it back to the top of the key. Can we set up? The shot is going to be put up and good. Number 22, Anthony Cooper was able to land the shot back to a three-point game. Nice little mid-range there. Great job controlling the floor from Augustana. Started with Ambrose. Dishing the ball around. See, pass inside to Braun. Chavello going to take the three, and it's going to be in and out. Braun attempting to tap it out, but it's going to go to Augustana. And inside there by Gillingham as Ambrose sets up Gilberto. And over to Larson. Larson was trying to work inside on Braun, but he's going to have to reset. Open lane there. Shot put up. No good. Rebound by Nets. Richardson, the open three look, no good. Trying to hit a three in transition as Augustana comes up back with the ball. You see a lot of fast transitions, back and forth, back and forth. 
Braun gets the steal there, but here's the deal for Wheaton. Zero second chance points in the first half. That's got to change in the second half. They want to see some. And Ferguson puts up the three and connects. Timeout's going to be called by Shower. Tie game here, 48-48. Finally, a little bit of life there for Wheaton. But, but like I was saying, you need to see the second chance points go up in the second half if you want to see some life from this Thunder team. Absolutely. And one of the care, and one of the main guys I'm going to look at is Connor Braun, the 6'9 graduate student. Let's see if he can make a difference underneath the basket because he has some of the size advantage, especially over this smaller Augustana team. Yeah, Dominic, you're, you're exactly right. And it comes down to what Coach Shower has talked about, physicality. Are they going to get physical? Are they going to box out? Are they going to be able to go up and grab the rebounds and put it back up? They need to be quick and physical in the paint off the offensive rebound. They're putting up a lot of threes, and on the ones that they don't connect on, they need to be able to grab the rebounds, not just spread the floor, but condense a little bit, grab, grab the board and be able to put it back up, or at least pass it out and try to get another three-point opportunity. You see a lot of the Wheaton starters are going to take a rest at this point in the game. Braun, Richardson, and Chavello are all out as Garza... Schultz and Ferguson are on the floor along with Sock and Nets. So let's see how Wheaton's, some of Wheaton's bench players do in this opportunity. 48-48 with 10.53 and counting to go. This will be real important for the Thunder. They only had four bench points in the first half. Look for them to step up here in the second half. And the three-point shot is good there for number 22, Anthony Cooper. Huge three-pointer for Augustana as they take the lead. Ferguson looking to respond. He sends it to Garza. Garza trying to get inside, sends it to Schultz. Outside back to Ferguson. Ferguson trying to drive on the inside. Garza gonna put up a three and connects. Daniel Garza with the three. Garza responds. Coach Shower completely fired up there for Garza. 51-51 here as we approach the 10 minute mark in the second half. Romero trying to drive inside. He's gonna send it to Cooper, gonna put up the shot, no good. Rebound there by Ferguson. Ferguson looking to pick up the tempo and run the floor. Gonna pull, pull up, sends it out to Schultz. Schultz on the outside, back to Ferguson. Sock, so far no penetration on the inside as they're sending it around at the top of the key. Sent inside Garza, trying to get the move, no good. Sock, gonna drive inside, but Romero guards him closely. Sock. Going to go with a step back three. No good. Just rims it out there. Like you said, a lot of outside movement, not able to penetrate up inside. They've got to figure out a way to penetrate this Augustana defense if they want to get more points in the paint. It's going to be collected by Zach Anderson, who's going to put up the three off the front of the rim. Garza with the rebound. Garza's going to send it to Sock. Kick it over to Ferguson. Garza had a bit of a chance there, but decided not to. Schultz battling inside, gonna look to put it up, sends it over to Nets. Extra pass to Garza, he puts it up, no good. Garza might have been fouled on that one as he hits the floor, but ref didn't see it, 51-51. We're seeing a back and forth, shot for shot boxing match here. See so far Augustana trying to get inside. As Wheaton's defense holding up so far, Romero drives on the inside, puts it up, gets the foul, almost got the and one, but it's gonna to go to the line for two. Take a look at the replay here. That'll be on Nate Sock. Sock just got a little physical. 10 on 10 action there. It's Danny Romero. Looking to give Augustana the lead. And he's gonna rim out the first one. The sophomore from Spain. Don't get to say that often. No, a lot of, as we see in D3, often not a lot of international players, but Danny Romero making the trip to the Midwest. Bet he was in for a little bit of a shock this January with all that cold weather. Absolutely, Malaga, in the southern part of Spain, I believe. Some pretty nice weather as the rest of the country does overall. Boy, would I like to be there right about now. Oh, man. Got it. Chavello trying to find Richardson in the corner, finds Schultz in the corner. Schultz sends it around. Schultz 
Richardson in the corner, no good. There were seven seconds left. Rebound there, and there's a nice play by Chevello. Heads up play by Chevello there. He goes for the offensive rebound. What we talked about, getting the rebound off the three. He sees that he's about to go out of bounds and just chucks it off. I believe that was Zach Anderson he chucked it off of. Thunder maintained possession. And let's see if they're able to capitalize. Kick ball there from Hawkins. Sorry, bud. This is basketball. Fortunately, Hawkins call for the kickball. Wheaton's able to maintain possession. Schultz gonna send it in to Chevello. Chevello trying to give Wheaton the lead here. Sends it back into Schultz. Schultz immediately swarmed and unfortunately fires it into the hands of Knut or of Knuth. Romero running the floor, sends it to Hawkins, looking for the three, no good. Rebound there, nice play by Knuth, and Knuth gets the second chance opportunity. Chevello almost came down with that rebound. If we take a look at the replay here, but Knuth just out physicaled him. And Romero, nice defensive play as Chevello is going to have to reset. Augustana doing their best soccer impressions here. No. Two kick balls, but. It's going to come down to Wheaton to capitalize off of these errors from the Augustana defense. Are they going to be able to control the floor? Are they going to be able to slow down? Find the open shot. We'll see if they can do that on this possession. As Richardson sends it inside. Chevello looking to get the opportunity. Nets from the corner. Contested shot. Puts it up and is good. Kyle Nets ties the game. Just what the doctor ordered right there from Kyle Nebs. What a shot from the corner. Augustan is going to look to respond. 7-14 here. Romero outside, slings it over. Hawkins going to find Romero back in the corner. His three-pointer no good. Rebound there by Richardson as Wheaton controls, looking to gain the lead on this possession. Richardson, fine net. Braun on the outside, sends in to Sorensen. Richardson, Richardson's going to drive and gets the, the basket as Wheaton takes a two-point lead. Great mid-range shot selection there by Soren Richardson as he gives the Thunder the edge here. Hawkins gets the ball from Hamilton. Hawkins trying to drive on Richardson. Hawkins going to put it up and rejected by Soren Richardson. Sends it over. Braun driving. Braun's going to put it up and gets the foul at one. Connor Braun showing the muscle. What a series right there from Wheaton. We had Richardson with the block coming down the court. Braun with a strong effort, gets the and one, gives a much needed boost to this Wheaton offense. The whole Wheaton team, the bench getting excited for that one. Wheaton gaining momentum here. We see Connor Braun trying to capitalize on this opportunity. I'm making his presence known and Soren Richardson making a great defensive play to add to his 18 points on the night. Braun is going to go off the back rim. Still a four point game. Just a little strong there. You see a bunch of substitutions here as Ambrose is back into the game as well as Knuth. Send it over, Gilberto. Finds Knuth, Knuth swarmed immediately by Sox, sends it back out to Ambrose. Ambrose is gonna jack up the three and is gonna connect, what a shot by Evan Ambrose. Ambrose with his second three of the night, second shot of the night. He doesn't look like much, but from beyond the arc, he's hit two. Absolutely great play as all of a sudden it's a one point game yet again. Richardson. Nice pass on the inside to Braun. Braun fires it across the court. Three point put up and the four point play. Kyle Nett connects from downtown. What a shot from Nebs. Here's the replay. Just wide open in the corner, cross court pass. And Skadoosh, Nebs makes it there. Nebs channeling his inner dragon warrior as he's going to go to try to complete the four point play opportunity. 61-57. And he converts. Amazing four-point play there by the Thunder. Gives them the five-point lead. Wow, what an electric sequence we just saw there from the Thunder. Converting defense into offense and capitalizing on some of those mistakes from Augustana. 
you know Coach Showers got to be pleased with that, got to be pleased with Wheaton taking control of the ball game, slowing down, finding the open shot, getting their, their playmakers open. Like we said, Nebs didn't start the second half. They were going to save him for later in the half. And we looked for him to get heated up, and sure enough, 13 points. He's heating up. Absolutely. He becomes the second Wheaton player to be into double figures. So far, we've seen absolute dominance from Soren Richardson. Five rebounds, 18 points, as well as an assist. 17 or seven for 13 from the floor, shooting 53%. If you look over at the Viking side of the ball, Augustana, Tyler Knuth in foul trouble with four fouls. Obviously, one of their top, their top performer tonight with 14 points. That's going to be key to see if Wheaton can try to draw something up to induce him into a foul, get him out of here in these last 531 to play as Wheaton controls the game with a five-point lead. He is back in the game, but we're going to see Evan Ambrose, the court general, command the Viking offense. Ambrose. Gonna dump it off to Larson. Chase Larson, one of their main rebounders on this, in this game. Larson gonna fire it over to Ambrose. Ambrose, Travello working on him. Gonna try to get away from him, create some separation. Swarmed by Biggs, sends it over. Larson gonna put it up and connects. Chase Larson able to bring the Wheaton lead within three. Ambrose was a little bit sneaky there with the ball movement, getting underneath the basket, dishing it out. Just allowing Larson to get to get that step up mid range shot. Good selection there by the Vikings. Richardson, they send it to Chevello. Richardson finds Nets in the corner. Unfortunately, Nets loses it, and that's going to be Augustana ball. Looks like there was just a little bit of hand fighting there for the ball. They're going to call Nebs, last man to touch it. Ambrose and the Vikings now have an opportunity. There's going to be a timeout. I believe Coach Delp wants to talk this one over before this important possession. Yeah, it's a three-point ball game. You've shot well from beyond the arc. Decently well, 35%. Keep in mind, Augustana has the highest three-point percentage in the entire CCIW. But on the other end of the court, Wheaton has the most three-pointers made in the entire CCIW. The reason they don't own the percentage in the CCIW for three-pointers is because they take so many three-point shots. That's where most of their offense is generated from. You might see Augustana come out and try to dial up some sort of three-point play here. But obviously, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They found a lot of success in the mid-range and surging up to the basket. Absolutely, and some of their good ball movement has created some uh, off-ball opportunities as Augustana has been able to drive to the basket. We've seen six lead changes and seven ties in this game so far, a true back-and-forth affair. Gillingham back into the game. Sends off to Gilberto, and now Wheaton's gonna do their best impression of soccer as that's gonna be a kick ball, I believe, on Connor Braun. Yeah, Braun just stepping out there. Got his foot in the way of Gilberto's pass. Ambrose gonna dunk it over, and there's gonna be a nice opportunity there for Larson, but no good. Bodies hit the floor. I believe the possession arrow is going to go to Wheaton. Yeah, Braun and Nebs went up for that rebound. A little friendly fire there. But they're able to get their hands on the ball, get the jump ball. And possession arrow, as you said, goes to the Thunder. Mike Hamilton checks back into the game for Nicholas Gilberto. Augustana substitutes their bigs. Sock. Inbound to Chevello, 424 and counting. And this one on Chevello, able to get past Larson there. Braun controls on the top of the key. Braun finds Richardson in the corner. Sock, so far, defense holding up. Braun takes a three pointer and connects the big man from downtown. The bench loves that one. Braun with a three gives them the six point lead. You see Augustana looking to respond as this game is starting to get away from them. Knuth puts it up and is good. Tyler Knuth leading the Augustana charge. 
as it's back to a four point game. Chavello sends to Sorensen, Braun, throw at the top of the key. Sends in to Chavello, Chavello underneath the basket, trying to work there on Hamilton, goes up, not, doesn't get the basket, but gets the foul. Good movement there from Chavello, backing into the defense. Take a look at the replay here. He's backing in, backing in, goes up for the shot. A little left-handed action there, doesn't fall. Chavello trying to increase this Wheaton lead. Unfortunately, goes off the back iron. Yeah, just a little strong there. We've seen a few of, the fr of Wheaton's free throws just kind of hit off the back of the rim. Chabello gets the second opportunity to go. 66-61 as Augustan is going to have to move. Ambrose thought about passing it off, finds the open three in the corner, and it's good. The conversion by Larson, and what a play by Ambrose as the, po as the point guard on that one. Yeah, Ambrose has done a phenomenal job all night getting in between Thunder defenders, making crazy ridiculous passes. We've seen over the shoulder, we've seen behind the back, we've seen cross body around players, and he just had a great drive there. Pass it out to Larson, Larson with the open shot, connected. We see, we see another kicked ball from the Augustana side playing good defense as Wheaton is looking to build on their sl slim lead. Richardson. Going to try to drive it himself, find Sock. Sock unable to corral it, and that ball is going to be for Augustana. Their trouble in the paint continues. Not what you want to see with just under three minutes left to go in the ball game. It's such a close game. It's a two-point game at this point. Absolutely, and every opportunity is going to count here. Ambrose going to dump it off to Larson. Larson finds Hamilton, back to Ambrose on the outside. Ambrose trying to see if he can drive and get the opportunity, sends it to Knuth, Knuth puts it up, no good, and that ball's gonna stay with Augustana as they say it's gonna be off on Sock. Yeah, Sock just tried to go up for the rebound, it rolls off the back of his fingers, out of bounds, It'll re uh, Augustana will retain possession. They've got a really good chance to take the lead here. Potentially look for the outside shot like we've seen. Ooh, and they had the outside shot. Number 20, Gillingham drives in, but a quick foul there from Richardson. Yeah, it didn't really look like Richardson was all prepared for the inbound. Got caught off guard a little bit. Turns out to Knuth. Hamilton has the ball. Knuth going to try from three. No good, and the rebound's going to be controlled. Ooh, Nets didn't know that pass was coming from Chavello, but luckily able, Wheaton's able to corral it. Knuth just wasn't able to put enough air on that one. Richardson drives inside, nets from the corner. No good, rebound is controlled by Ambrose and Hamilton. Ambrose gonna drive outside, Knuth sends it underneath. I think that's number 20, Gillingham, trying to put it up and it goes. Colton Gillingham ties the ball game here, 66 with a minute 50 left to go. Look for Wheaton to slow down here. Look for them to try to control the court. Watch the ball movement for the open thunder. Sock trying to get Wheaton back in the lead. Send it over to Trevello. Braun on the outside, fires it underneath to Nets. Sort Richardson from the corner, no good. Off the back iron. As there's going to be an off-ball foul. Ooh. That's going to be a foul on Braun. Braun trying to plead his case. We'll take a look at the replay here. Yeah, it looks like uh, they were just getting after a little bit. Might have been a little bit of theatrics there. From Knuth. I think Braun was saying that Knuth had hit his nose on the previous possession. Absolutely, Wheaton not happy with that call. This is going to be a crucial call here as the refs convene 66 to 66 with a minute 26 left in this game. A little bit of back and forth here from the refs. See what they decide to call here. If they're going to let it slide, if they're going to call it on Braun, if they're going to tee Braun up. We already saw the technical in the first half from Nate Sock. That's what I'm wondering if this conference is as they debate giving Braun a technical here. Wow, that would be huge in this game.
I would imagine if you're August Anna, you're hoping, you're hoping for the opportunity to shoot free throws and gain the lead. And if you don't get that, look to control the clock. That's going to be probably the most important thing. If, you're, if they're able to control the clock, get the shot underneath like they've been so successful all night long, that's going to put them in a, in a decent position to run away with this game. Absolutely. And for the Wheaton side, you're going to have to find a response because most likely we're going to have Augustana going to the line. Yeah, Knuth looks like he's heading to the charity stripe. Remind me, what was that vocab word you had earlier? A little, little bit of rigmarole yeah. from the referees here as they go back and forth, finally deciding what to call as we wait to see what their final decision is. Ooh, and they're going to call the foul on Knuth. And he's out of the game. Looks like they got Braun on his story from Knuth hitting him in the nose on the previous possession. Looks That's like Knuth's ah. fifth foul. He fouls out. That's huge for the Titans. He's their leading scorer with 16 tonight. Wow. Well, it looks like now the refs are going to have some explaining to do to Coach Delp. Now they're explaining to Coach Shower. I wish I could hear what they're saying so that we knew exactly what was going on. So far, it looks like Shower wasn't too happy with the call either. There's a sense of confusion, seemed like from Augustana. Where does the possession arrow fall? And we're going to have another timeout here as both teams are going to now want to talk it over. Currently, the possession arrow points towards Augustana. We'll see, we'll see how this ends up playing out. Now, if we go, if we, if we go by the numbers, Wheaton's shooting 12 for 29 from three. That's 41.4%, doing a great job getting the ball up, getting the shots. I think that's where their bread and butter is going to lie here down in the last minute 26. Find Nebs, find Richardson, you're going to be fine. Now, on the other end of the court, Augustana, 8 for 22, 36.4% from beyond the arc, but having a lot of success in the paint, having a lot of success, again, on those second chance points. See, tr see them try to go up for the basket. They've been able to draw fouls. Maybe that's what they try to do here. Maybe they try to go up to the basket, draw a foul, maybe try to draw the and one play. Just got word from the official. That was a double flagrant one. Knuth hit Braun in the nose. Braun responded. They both got called for the flagrant. Knuth obviously fouled out. And the, the possession arrow stays with the Vikings. As we see the result, Vikings get the ball, but with no Knuth, we'll see who steps up here for the Vikings. Larson has the ball, gonna drive inside on Sock. He's gonna put it up, no good. Rebound's gonna be controlled by Chavello. Timeout's going to be called by Coach Shower, as that's huge. With a minute three left, Wheaton now has the ball and the opportunity to take the lead. Larson was doing his best spin move impression there, trying to get up to the basket, couldn't make it fall. Great job from the Thunder defense, corralling that rebound, maintaining possession, being able to call the foul. Just great all-around effort there. Now. The ball is in, in their hands. How will they gain the lead? How will they control the outcome of this game? Are they going to go for the three ball? Are they going to go inside, try to out physical and penetrate down the middle? See so far for Augustana, what has worked has been penetration into the paint, specifically by Romero, as well as Larson getting second chance opportunities. They go with Ambrose on the floor instead of Romero, who's been a true facilitator. You see Chevello 
Under a minute to play here at King Arena. Nets. Going to find the opportunity. Chevello resets at the back of the top of the key. 15 on the shot clock. Chevello going to drive in, put up the shot, and it falls! Nick Chevello gives the Thunder the lead! Great patience from Cervello, waiting for it to develop, putting it in off the glass. And Ambrose looking to respond quickly, but they're going to have to call a timeout. 39.8 on the clock, and what a play by Chevello. Yeah, that was great effort there by Chevello. I'll be honest, not what I was expecting. I was expecting an outside shot. They haven't had the most success contesting from inside the paint, but Chevello just biding his time, waiting for it to set up. He got the look he wanted, he went up, and he waited, tapped it in off the glass. That was just a great play by the Thunder. Coach Shower had a number drawn up there. Now we'll see how Coach Delp and the Vikings respond here as they call the timeout. They have the ball in there into the court. Are they going to go from beyond the arc? This is the same story. It's, it's a boxing match, shot for shot. Possession for possession. Who's going to come out on top? Absolutely. And that's one of the types of plays that we wanted to see from the senior Chevello. In a year where there's been definitely an identity search and a lot of new players coming in for the Sweden team, we see one of the more experienced players, Nick Chevello, taking the ball, saying, this is my moment, and putting up the great shot. Yeah, it's definitely a great moment for Chevello, being one of the older guys on the team, the oldest starter. Um, you know, he, he's been around the block a few times, so it's good to see him take control of the game here and put up that shot. Fairly confident, he feels com confident having the game in his hands, calling his shot. Well, so far, Wheaton is going to have, at least what it looks like now, the last possession as the shot clock is at 23 seconds, game clock at 39.8. So Wheaton might have the end shot if all goes according to plan. Ambrose trying to drive in on Nets. Going to send it over to Cooper. Cooper's going to put up the shot and it's going to go out as the home net gets it. And a timeout's going to be called. Ooh, I believe Ambrose might have had Cooper in the corner unguarded there. Ambrose has been so good tonight finding the open shooter. We've seen some ridiculous passes from him. Not this time. Now, I don't know what the play was that they had drawn up. They went for that mid, that, that contested mid-range. Shot didn't fall, it was bouncing around. And then just the ball just ended up rolling out towards uh, half court. Augustana mains, maintains possession. There's about a six point differential between the shot clock and the game clock. If they do tie the game up, Wheaton will have a few seconds to get the ball down on their side of the court, potentially call a timeout, draw up a play, and go for the win. Absolutely, and if you're Wheaton, one of the things you cannot have right now is a three. I believe, based on the three-point shooting, not sure if Augustana's gonna go for the three. Seems pretty risky, but if they get their open shot, they're definitely gonna take it. 100%. Look for Ambrose to control the court on the inbound. He, he's got the best vision of the court so far that we've seen from Augustana. I imagine he'll get the ball in the inbound and find an open shot. Maybe he'll drive inside and dish to the outside. That's sort of the pattern that we've seen throughout the course of this game. Absolutely, and so far, so inbound is going to be taken by Anthony Cooper. As they're looking, they're going to quickly dish it out to Ambrose. 21 seconds. Going to be sent in to Larson. Sent to Hamilton and on the crossover, and there's going to be good from Anthony Cooper. Shot clock is going to be turned off. 15 seconds tied game here. As Chevello has the ball, Shower's not going to call a timeout. They're going to let this one go. Chevello spinning, puts up the shot. It's rejected. Augustana has a chance. Going to put up the, the shot, no good. And ladies and gentlemen, we have extra basketball. We're going to overtime here at King Arena. Wow. A little bit shocked that Coach Shower didn't call a timeout there. I'll, I'll just be honest. Maybe he had a play drawn up that he wanted. I know it was a bit loud. They were shouting communication from all across the bench. Didn't get the shot they wanted, and the ball was swatted away as they were trying to control the court. Now we have extra basketball. And what a great defensive stand there from Augustana, creating the turnover, trying to get that extra shot. But we'll have five minutes of overtime here 
as both of these teams have been in lockstep this entire time. Nobody for the Thunder is really in that much of foul trouble. If we go and look at the, the stat sheet, Sot and Nebs, both with three fouls. Richardson with two, Braun with three. That's, that, that's about it. Garza, he has two. He may come off the bench. I'm not too sure. But if you go and look at the other side of the ball, it's relatively the same. The Vikings don't really have anybody near foul trouble. It was only Knuth who fouled out that they had in foul trouble. And he was the center point of their offense still with the most points for the Vikings. 16 points leading the way. Not having Knuth in this five minute period of overtime is gonna be huge for Augustana. We're gonna to look to see if from who steps up for them, if that's Romero, if that's Larson, uh, if that's Cooper, who is quietly had 11 points and had a great layup to send this thing into overtime. On the floor for the Thunder, Braun, Nets, Richardson, Savello, and Sock. Hamilton and Braun on the tip off and it's gonna go to Wheaton Way. Stock corrals it. Chavello will control the first possession. Richardson trying to drive inside. Augustana shifting back to that 3-2 zone. Nets with the open three off the front rim and the rebound corralled there by Larson. A rare miss from Nebs on such an open shot that he is bread and butter making. Just doesn't fall there. Gillingham controls and the shot is gonna be put up there and connects from three. That's Anthony Cooper from downtown. That's huge if you're a Vikings fan. How will the Thunder respond here? Anthony Cooper not only sending this one into overtime, but getting the first points of it. As Augustana reaches out to a 71-68 lead. Chavello driving, he's gonna put up, rejected there. Chavello recovers. And there's gonna be, I believe they're gonna call a travel. No, they're called a jump ball there. Chavello's shot was blocked, he went to grab it. And it looked like Chase Larson got two hands on the ball, so they called the jump ball. Chavelle was trying his best to put it back up quickly. What a play by Larson there as Augustana now has a chance to make this a two possession game. Ambrose driving in, guarded well by Chavello, kicked out to Gillingham. Hamilton gonna send it over to Ambrose again. Ambrose guarded by Chavello, nine seconds left on the shot clock. Ambrose driving inside, looking for the shot, rejected by Chavello with two on the shot clock. It's just a complete mismatch. You've got 5-9 going against 6-4 there. I'll take my odds with the 6-4. Definitely is. Ambrose, definitely one of the facilitators, but we haven't seen him much from point scoring wise. He has six on the game. Ambrose, looking at inbound. The shot's gonna get put up, no good. Open rebound, but there's gonna be an off-ball foul on Nets. Nets gets a little push in the back. Ooh, and that's a tough foul for Wheaton as they had the rebound. And now, Anthony Cooper is gonna go to the line. Both teams in the bonus, this will be one and one. Cooper puts up the first shot, no good. And the rebound is gonna go right to Ambrose. Augustana getting another second point opportunity. Gillingham driving in, Gillingham puts it up, no good. Rebound fought over, Ambrose controls it again. And Augustana capitalizing, getting another opportunity, puts it up, no good. And the shot clock's gonna expire. Wheaton ball, wow. What a sequence there. Talk about corralling the rebound, trying to go for second chance points. I don't think I've seen that many opportunities back to back to back to back in such a long time with no capitalization. And Wheaton looking to see if they can capitalize. Still a three point game. Chavello driving inside on Ambrose, has the mismatch. Nets gonna drive inside. Braun thought about the three, decides not to. Chavello, nine seconds left on the shot clock. Richardson puts up the three and connects! Soren Richardson, tie ball game! He had a hand in his face. There was a little bit of contact. 
and he drained it. Wow, huge shot for the Thunder. Hamilton controls on the other end of the floor. Ambrose trying to drive inside. Swarmed by Chevello. nice kick out pass. Puts up the three, no good. Rebound there, controlled by Braun. And it's gonna stay with Wheaton. Cooper unable to make the three and Braun corrals it. Yeah, great effort there by Braun. Hamilton pokes it out of his hands. Wheaton retains possession. See if they can gather the lead here. 2.22 left in the game. Romero checks into the game for Ambrose. So they're gonna go with someone offensive point guard with more point scoring abilities. Chevello gonna send it up the floor, 71-71. We're approaching the two minute mark in this overtime period. Braun sends it over to Chevello. Chevello driving, double team, trying to find the open man, finds Neps, Sock, trying to drive on the inside on Romero, puts up the shot and is gonna get the roll. And Shower's gonna take a timeout. 73-71 as Wheaton regains the lead. Talk about slow motion. I think that ball just rolled in in super slow motion there. Everybody was waiting for it to fall. And Sock retakes the lead for the Thunder in this exciting overtime period. Sock, not a ton of points on the night. Only has eight, but man, were those last two some of his most important minutes of the night. Here's a, he gives Wheaton the lead. Here's a new development. Nebs is out of the game on the bench. He has four fouls. Ooh. That last foul that he had against Cooper, pushing him in the back, off the rebound, made him, got him up to four fouls. I think Coach Shower's gonna save him, probably try to bring him back in around the last 30 seconds of the game. Garza is in for Nebs, and Ambrose back into the game for Romero. Larson had the ball, he's gonna send it to Hamilton as Gillingham is gonna be off and there's gonna be an off-ball foul. I believe that's gonna go against Wheaton. That'll be Garza. And Nebs quickly comes back off the bench. Cooper will go one for one. It's gonna be huge shots here for Anthony Cooper who's completely taken over for Augustana. Cooper makes the first. Yeah, Cooper's shown up ever since Knuth went out. 15 points so far. Looking to see if he can tie the game here for the Vikings. Cooper hits the second. Puts Cooper up at 16 points. Main one to watch in these final minute 40 of overtime. Pass it over, Chevello. Gonna kick it out to Soren Richardson. So back to Chevello. Nothing on the inside of the take quite yet. Chevello trying to drive. Cut by Braun. Covered well by Augustana. Five seconds left as Chevello is gonna try to have to put it up. Goes wildly to the basket. But Wheaton's gonna keep the ball. And Augustana can't believe it. Take a look at the replay here. Chevelle was just looking for the shot, tried to go for it, slipped out of his hands. I think they're gonna call that off on Cooper. Richardson puts up the shot, no good. Rebound on the floor, and Richardson's able to control, gets it, and gets the basket! Soren Richardson continues to his stellar night, giving Wheaton the two-point lead. Great awareness by Richardson, tracking that ball, getting it, and then laying it in. You see King Arena really into it now. Ambrose trying to drive in on Chevello. Puts up the shot, no good. Rebound there for Hamilton. Gillingham sends it over. It's gonna be Larson. Larson trying to put up the shot, no good. And Braun collects the rebound, and they're gonna call a foul. Take a look at the replay here. Chase Larson, great effort, thought it would go in. I just didn't get the there. A great job by Braun controlling that rebound. Garza is gonna check back into the game for Nets as Connor Braun is gonna look to make this more than a one possession game here. Braun 
Brown will convert. 76-73, 42.8 seconds left here in overtime. See if he can make this a two possession game. And he makes the second. Four point lead here for the Thunder. Ambrose will control the floor here for the Vikings. Working on Braun, complete mismatch. Gonna put it up, no good. And he sends it into the air. Shot there by Gillingham, no good. And the ball's gonna go back towards Wheaton. Great defensive possession there. I think they called Hamilton with a push. You see this one getting away from Augustana a little bit. Honestly, I was amazed to see Braun on Ambrose, the 5-9 versus 6-9 mismatch. You see Ambrose tried to put off the shot, but... Yeah, just uh, a little, little bit of a mismatch. A little bit. Chevello will make the first. Key free throws coming down the stretch here for the Thunder, 78 to 73. Coach Schauer commanding his team from the bench. Chevello makes the second. Augustana's gonna really have to hurry now. 27 seconds left. Ambrose trying to find an opportunity. Guarded on Braun again. Ambrose gonna put it up, trying to get the lob. Rejected by Connor Braun. 18.5 on the clock. A bit of a weird play here. I don't know if he was going for the alley-oop or if he was trying to go for a floater. Either way, it didn't work out. Ambrose underneath the basket, gonna fire it in to Larson. Larson's gonna try to put it up. Wild shot, no good. And that ball's gonna be controlled by Chevello, and Augustana is gonna have to foul. A great overtime performance here by the Thunder offense. Making their free throws, drawing the fouls, getting the shots. And it's been more or less all Thunder. We've seen great play from the Thunder here in the stretch. As we see a double-double here for Chevello, trying to add to his point total, and he'll make the first. 15 points, 11 rebounds, three assists for Chevello on the night. Meanwhile, the leading scorer, Soren Richardson, with 23 points, six rebounds. The second shot's good. 81 to 73, 10 seconds left. This will most likely do it here. Ambrose gonna put up the three-point shot. Garza collects the rebound, and that's gonna be it. The buzzer sounds, and Wheaton College secures the overtime win. 81 to 73, they get the win over Augustana, and they are back into the win column here at King Arena. What a game we had for the Thunder. See Richardson collecting 23 points, six rebounds, being the leading scorer for the Thunder. And in a moment, we're gonna send it down to the floor as Parker Rogers will have Coach Mike Shower for the post-game interview. Then Dominic Brown. First, Mike Shower revving up the fans, and we'll send it down to Parker on the floor. And Parker, Coach Shower, all smiles and a fist pump there after a tough overtime win. What are your thoughts on the game? Yeah, first of all, I'm thankful. I mean, some of this is Wheaton, right? You're, these are their friends more than their basketball team, but just thankful the people have kind of stuck in there with us. Listen, we've been competitive all year, and I don't know that I think this is theologically accurate, but we kind of deserved one of these. Um, and, you know, we, we had so many chances. We've been ahead in a lot of games, and, you know, the truth is the – the winner tonight gets a little bit closer to the conference tournament. Loser tonight, that, that path gets a little more difficult. And I think that's a fair goal for us right now is to try to get into the conference tournament. So um, here's what I like about this team. For people that follow us and aren't used to us having this kind of record, if we do actually care about all the other things we want athletics to be teaching our young men, in this case young men, young men and women, 
This team has it. They persevere. They've had a great attitude. They practice hard every day. That's why I thought, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to get one. They've kind of deserved it. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. And that concludes our presentation of Wheaton College Basketball presented by WTSN.